You ask questions, and I answer them. Are you guys nuts? What am I talking about? It's super cool because of the Jenkins design. Boom, watch that. What is up, watch fam? Welcome to episode 70 of Ask TNH. Let's go back from the gym. I, first of all, I hate the gym. Second of all, I look like shit, so I'm sorry for not, you know, being even vaguely presentable, uh, but this is the best you guys are going to get today out of me. If you don't already, go ahead and follow us on Snapchat, like, right the now. Instagram, too. All right, let's get into the questions. I'm a first-time watch buyer. Should I buy the Explorer 1 or a Datejust? I love these questions because I really like to be of help and of aid to people who, you know, are like first-time watch buyers. It's fun to cater to the geeks, to cater to the hardcore people who are really into this, uh, but it is isolating. You know, talking about higher-end kind of sh isolates, you know, people who aren't necessarily into this as, as heavily. So thank you for uh, even asking a question, first of all, and watching STNH. Day just. Like with 150 uh, percent, and I'll tell you why. So, if you are a first-time luxury buyer and you're not necessarily interested in watches, right? You 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 obviously contacted me with two Rolexes, uh, and you're making it clear that you know you're only going to buy you know one, and that's kind of it, like forever. Uh, for that reason, I think that you're going to want, in my opinion, you would want versatility. You're going to want a watch that is really going to maximize its potential in your wardrobe or in your function of your life, right? So an Explorer 1 is an awesome watch. Like I 110% think that it's a super cool watch um, with a great design, etc., etc. I think it's a great watch, no doubt. Uh, and I would recommend it to someone uh, who had a couple of watches, right? But because you are strictly going for um, uh, one watch, I would say Datejust. What the Datejust achieves that the Explorer 1 doesn't, okay, is a scope in dress and as well into a sportier look, right? Don't get me wrong. If, if you're someone that does not wear a suit or does not really dress up at all, um, then yeah, maybe the Explorer 1. But uh, because I know you do work, you do, you want to be formal. The Datejust does it much better, uh, like significantly better. In fact, the Datejust purpose was to do it better, right? The Datejust purpose was to be a dressy watch, a watch that is kind of for occasion or for kind of more formal attire. But as well as it does dressy, put it with a suede strap or put it with a leather strap or something a little bit more durable, a NATO, and now you have a sports watch, right? So and not necessarily a sports watch, but a watch that can achieve sportiness, Right, whereas the Explorer One, in my opinion, does does do sportiness well, but does not do dressy well. Right, so I think that the Date Just does sporty significantly better than the Explorer One does dressy. You're gonna get one watch and one watch kind of forever. You want that versatility. So a Date Just from Jubilee bracelet, right, from like the most formal way. And if you want to go with a crocodile bracelet, whatever it is, that's going to be, you know, suits, sweaters, you know, very formal look. But you throw it on like a on like like a vintage you know kind of strap uh, or like suede-ish beat up straps and stress straps, you're totally casual. I mean you're you're 110 you know weekend warrior casual ready. Whereas the Explorer One, you're gonna have a hard time hitting those those dressy formal notes. So yes, this is not necessarily about watches as much as it's about style. So sorry for people who are you know looking for a watch watch like hardcore watch episode. Uh, but this is equally as important. And I think that answering the questions of people who are really just saying okay. Like, bear with me, Christian. I just am trying to buy a watch, uh, you know, Rolex, what should it be? This is very important. Uh, and I also think, you know, not that you asked this, but go go pre-owned. You know, uh, I know for me, like from our website, our shop, the 1601 is one of my favorite, you know, watches to wear uh, by a known. It's incredibly versatile. Uh, I don't. I've never had an Explorer one. I mean, I, you know, every dealer, you know, including ourselves, can they can buy one, you know, and can find one. The date just. Uh, I, I'm biased. I mean, it was my first watch. Uh, I just think that it hits all the all the right notes, and it, it really is uh, an iconic. Uh, and there's a reason why it's iconic, right? And like the Royal Oak is iconic too, but the Royal Oak is significantly more expensive, right? Like kind of any watch novice that saves money, that you know, as long as they're you know of some sort of means, they can get themselves a date just. Right, they can justify spending, you know, three grand on a watch, but uh, but a brand new, you know, even a brand new Rolex is six, seven, eight thousand dollars. I think the average sale price is like eleven. Uh, so you know, that, that's kind of where I stand. Go go with date just um, because it's going to suit you better always. Thank you guys for watching episode 70 of Ask TNH. Follow us on Snapchat if you didn't at the start of this video.
even though you should have. Uh, and uh, and that's it. Please, people who are not necessarily like ha hardcore watch geeks, they're just kind of like into watches uh, a little bit and just need some questions answered, reach out to me. I, I'm probably going to give your questions priority over the watch geeks questions. I'm here as a, as a service and to add value and to be a resource for everyone, but particularly you guys. You know, you guys have a lot less foundation there and I want to help you guys build that. So please shoot me an email uh, at info at Theo and Harris. Follow me on Snapchat and snap me a question. Whatever you want to do, uh, just do so. Thank you guys.